Hi, welcome to another Building Bitcoin Websites video tutorial. Blockchain.info recently changed their Receive Payments API. They have now released version 2, and they are actually outphasing version 1. And the big difference between version 2 and version 1 is the uh, hierarchical deterministic wallets, also known as HD, BIP32. Uh, so Receive Payments API is meant for merchants. Um, this new version creates more privacy for the merchant, which we'll go over in just a bit. Uh, it uses HD wallets, so it can generate addresses deterministically, so you only need one private key, and it can then generate all the future private keys that will be used. Um, there's also no forwarding in this new version. The previous version forwarded funds, we'll go over that, and it still provides callbacks or notifications. You can also think of a callback uh, similar to a cron job. If you're familiar with the web development cron jobs, it will run a certain file or a certain page every uh, a certain amount of time that you set so you can have a cron job run once an hour, once a day, once every minute, uh, whatever you set and then it's usually used to update a database or other things on your website and I can think of a callback similar to that except it will run when a payment is received on a designated Bitcoin address. Okay so the version 1 of the Bitcoin uh, I'm sorry the blockchain received payments API is being phased out on December December 7th they're going to be getting rid of their version 1 and switching over to version 2 uh, so let's explain how the version 1 worked and the differences so version 1 you would provide a Bitcoin address your Bitcoin address and when someone would visit your page it would generate a new address and then after that someone else will visit your page and it'll generate yet another unique address and once these are generated it creates a callback URL so once funds are received for one of these addresses so let's say someone sends funds to this one new address what it's going to do is after I believe it's one confirmation it kinda changed a bit as time went on during the uh, spam attack that was happening in early 2015 uh, but once this address received the funds blockchain.info would then send the funds back to this address <clears throat> for no charge, for free. Uh, so it would create two transactions uh, when it was only actually one transaction on the blockchain. And so when someone would send a fund to this address, once it was received, it would forward the funds back over to the originating address. <clears throat> now this created a lack of privacy for a merchant. Uh, someone could follow these addresses. If you say you sent funds to this address, you could watch and see where it was sent to, and then you could see the merchant's main address here and see how many uh, sales they're doing and things like that. Um, also, when it sent these funds, it would send a callback URL uh, to your website so you could update things. And that's still the same, the callback, but um, the version 2 it uses an extended public key it's known as BIP32 or hierarchical deterministic wallets uh, you get an extended public key and this is what you provide the receive payments API when someone visits the page it'll generate a new address when someone sends funds to this address it does not forward funds back because it doesn't need to because it's an extended public key this address was generated based off of the public key the extended public key uh, BIP32 and it also has an extended private key so you have the key to this address and when it generates this address you have the key to this address as well and so on and so forth all the way through these addresses um, when I looked up on the wiki it said I believe 2 to the 32nd power so that's in the order of in the billions of addresses that can be created uh, someone please correct me if I'm wrong regarding the extended public key and how many addresses that can be derived but it looks like in the orders of billions so you should not really ever run out of these and it'll, uh, it'll just keep generating addresses you'll always have access to these and there is no forwarding back to the original address because it doesn't need to so this A um, it increases privacy for the user or for the merchant so they can't see where the funds are being forwarded because there are no funds being forwarded it also reduces uh, stress and transactions on the blockchain now there's only one transaction going through there are no forwarding transactions going on
Those are the big differences between the two receive payment APIs with blockchain. Again, they're going to phase out version one. So if you're using version one, you need to go update your code. Uh, you can watch, I have a video on the receive payments API. The usage between version one and version two are very, very similar. The only difference is, is instead of providing them with a unique Bitcoin address for receive, you're providing them with an extended public key. All right, and you're also going to need uh, to request a API key with blockchain.info. So head over to blockchain.info, go to their API section, and then the API receive area. And then just scroll down to the second paragraph, and they have an area where you can request an API key. It takes about, well, at least for me, it took about 24 hours. And so you'll need that with every request you send. Um, so with also every request you send, you will need an extended public key. Uh, you can use one from an outside wallet, your own, or you can use uh, one from blockchain.info's new wallet. It's currently in alpha. You can sign up for it at alpha.blockchain.info. Uh, here's one that I signed up with, and I've been sending some test payments to it, and these are all two different uh, addresses here that have been generated with the Receive Payment API, but you'll notice it all shows under one wallet on my address. And you can use that to build some pretty cool things. So something that I've put together is I created a shopping cart on my website. Um, so you can go here. People can add things to their cart. And then they can check out their cart. It will grab the current exchange rate. And they can check out. And let me type in a, a fake info here. So then it fills out. All the info and then hit submit and it will go to review and confirm it'll tell them their address that was entered and their order line item total amount in USD total amount in Bitcoin and then they can confirm and pay so I'm gonna bring up my wallet on my cell phone so then confirm and pay is gonna pop up the amount that they owed and then a unique address using the receive payments API so let me go ahead and send some money using my cell phone. So I'll take a picture of the QR code, or I'll scan it. And I will send just a little bit, 0 0.002, because I don't have a lot in this particular wallet right now. And then I'm going to hit Send. And you'll notice the website uh, received it and noticed right away this is using blockchain.info's WebSocket API I have a separate video on using that you can check it out if you'd like to so now the person knows they've received it um, I've also created email notifications so at this point the person has received an email regarding their order and for the merchant let's go back and you'll see the 0 0.02 has showed up and no payment forwarding is going on um, also with this, since I was dabbling through this, I decided to also create an admin panel. So then it will show the recent orders here, like how it, it shows there. And so you can click on the order. It'll show that I was supposed to send 0 0.7 for what I ordered with Tom Jones, but I only paid 0 0.02 because I didn't have a lot in my wallet. So the admin panel will tell you that this particular person underpaid. That has a unique order number. You can view the transaction on blockchain.info. That's right there. Uh, the ship to address, what they ordered by ID and amount. <clears throat> and I have a mark and order complete. The reason I do that is if somebody didn't pay you in full or maybe you just want to mark something complete once you ship the item. So you can hit mark order complete. And then you can go back and you'll see that it's marked under completed. I also created a manage inventory. So you can do that uh, very easily. Go in and edit one of your products. Just change something. So what if I change this to uh, Bitcoin fun time or just something stupid. But then you can go back and see that the, that the shop section now reflects the updated info that we put in there. Uh, let's go back and I also made it so you can add a product very easily so if you want to add a uh, Bitcoin USB miner it's ten dollars in USD these are old but they work 
and they won't make much money or whatever it is and then you can put in an image link so you don't have to upload anything to your server if you don't want to so let's look up a USB eruptor image grab one here we go click view image copy that paste it in here click add product let's go back to our shop and it will be down here automatically resizes it and it has been added um, this project is open source I have put it on github go to my github and it's under blockchain receive payments API and you can use this exact thing that I created using the receive API this is just one of the implementations you can do but it's very powerful because the uh, callback so when someone sends a payment it automatically updates your web server so I have this one when a payments received uh, as you saw it updated it in the admin panel you know it showed here with an order and this is all using the blockchain receive payment API only thing that wasn't using the receive payment API was the thing that popped up when the payment came in that was using the web socket for real-time notifications that's pretty much it for this video um, if you like it remember to subscribe like the video and head on over to my GitHub and check out this latest project. And that's it for today, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.